Coming up, as Tory Chancellor, Rishi Sunak stated he thought it wouldn't work. As Foreign Secretary, James cleverly said he thought it was batshit crazy. But the Tory party as a whole seemed to think that supporting the gimmicky, unworkable and ultimately pointless policy to send asylum seekers to Rwanda will somehow reverse their position in the polls. Well, not so fast. This week saw a further worsening of the Tories' polling, taking them right back to the heady days of trusts versus the lettuce. Indeed, asked if they thought the Rwanda policy was a good idea, only two people in the Tory-dominated audience of BBC's Question Time raised their hand. Is it possible that the electorate might just be more concerned with the cost of living crisis, four million British children living in poverty and record waiting lists in the NHS than they are about the hundred or so asylum seekers being put on a plane to Rwanda at the cost of two million pounds per head? Stay tuned. Do you ever get the feeling of deja vu? Do you ever get the feeling of deja vu? This week, for all their wind and piss, Tory rebels in Parliament again lost courage and failed to carry out their threat to vote against Sunak's safety of Rwanda bill because they were too scared of toppling the government and putting themselves out of a job within a few weeks. In the end, this threatened Tory rebellion imploded, as they always do, with just 11 Tory MPs voting against the legislation. That number included Suella Braverman, too bonkers even to hold a job in this crazy government, and the ambitious, honest Bob Jemrick, former immigration minister, and living proof of the Dunning-Kruger effect, who's gone from corrupt centrist dad to wannabe standard bearer for the far right as he weighs up his chances in the next Tory leadership beauty contest. But those 11 rebel MPs didn't include ex-vice chair of the party, 30p Lee Anderson, despite him previously voting against the bill on the grounds that it 100% wouldn't work. And do you know which high principles inform the reason why 30p Lee Anderson decided to side with the government on the third reading of the Rwanda bill? Well, he himself told GB News he was going to vote no, but changed my mind after watching Labour MPs giggling and laughing and taking the mick. You see, 30p Lee Anderson only became a Tory after facing expulsion from the Labour Party whilst a councillor, and clearly he's still completely triggered by Labour. Which triggers me to say, before I go on, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like and share a link on your social media accounts to help spread the word. Interim Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is pushing the Rwanda legislation through Parliament to try to demonstrate his strength. One of the unmet five pledges he promised to achieve by the end of last year was to stop the boats, and he was hoping that by flogging the dead Rwanda horse, he could convince the voting public that, better late than never, he was still determined to succeed. But the public are not convinced. Most people realise that the Rwanda bill is likely to meet significant opposition in the House of Lords, and despite the Tory media proclaiming that it represents the will of the people, actually, it wasn't even in the Tory manifesto. And any sensible voter, and the audience of the BBC's Question Time, will be concerned that it would represent a breach of international law, further damaging Britain's reputation on the world stage. And added to that, most people have heard various Tory rebel MPs and previous Tory ministers claiming the bill is doomed to fail. And when I say that Sunak has failed to convince the voting public of his strength, a YouGov survey for The Times this week found that support for the Conservatives has fallen to just 20%. Back to the same level as in October 2022, just before Truss was forced out of office. So much for Rishi Sunak turning things around. Based on this survey carried out from the 16th to the 17th of January, Labour has a 27-point lead now over the Tories, up from 23 points less than a week earlier, continuing the trend of the last few months with a widening gap between Labour and the Tories. And on immigration itself, often thought of as a bedrock win for the Tories over Labour, Rishi Sunak 
comes in a distant third behind both Keir Starmer and Nigel Farage, who themselves are pretty much neck and neck. Even amongst those who voted Conservative in 2019, Farage had a resounding lead over Sunak on immigration. No wonder that Isaac Levido, the strategist leading the Tory election campaign, is already warning that the Tories will lose the election if they remain divided over the Rwanda bill. But his plea seems to be falling on deaf ears as far as the so-called New Conservatives are concerned, with co-founders of this hard-right Tory pressure group, Danny Kruger and Miriam Cates, releasing the following statement this week. We have heard a great deal about party unity. As has often been observed in the last few days, what actually matters is delivering for our constituents and country. What is it about the Tories that they're obsessed with this word, delivering? Maybe it betrays some sort of moral affinity with the post office, perhaps. Anyway, Cates currently under investigation by the Parliamentary Standards Committee and the misogynist homophobe Kruger continue. The doomed pursuit of unity as an end in itself will mean nothing if, as we sadly anticipate, this bill fails to deliver on the promises we have made to those who send us here. A quick reminder, for all their bluster, the Conservative Party's Rwanda policy was first drafted by Priti Patel and adopted by Boris Johnson after the 2019 general election and purely as a distraction from the Partygate scandal. It wasn't mentioned at all in the Tory manifesto, let alone being a promise made to those poor deluded fools when they voted for Kruger, Cates and the rest of this cabal. Perhaps that's why the Tory rebellion only numbered 11 MPs in the end which of course gave Sunak every excuse to call a press conference on Thursday this week in order to do a victory lap in front of his client media. And I say client media because, as usual, critical journalists were excluded from the event. I mean, God forbid anyone tries to actually hold Sunak accountable. This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Such a projection of strength from a tetchy interim prime minister with a huge parliamentary majority who feels the need to brag to the media just because fewer of his own MPs than he expected actually rebelled in the end. Now, he just hopes that the House of Lords block the bill for as long as possible because he knows that if it were ever to be enacted, it would be exposed for the sham it really is. A hundred or so already traumatised people being forcibly manhandled onto a plane to Rwanda out of a hundred thousand asylum seekers who've come here, with the government having no idea where many of them currently are. That tiny percentage threatened with deportation means the bill is far less of a deterrent than the chances of drowning in the English Channel. In other words, if the bill is passed, the boats will keep coming and the Tories will still be gone. Or am I being too complacent? Leave a comment down below and thanks for watching.